I'm just going to briefly go over a little bit of the health concerns of environmental tobacco smoke because some of the articles, uh, especially promoted through the uh, tobacco companies, are indicating that there's absolutely no health risk related to secondhand smoke. And really, you have to be trying to fill yourself significantly if you think that uh, sitting in a, a car as a child uh, with your parents smoking in a in confined space that you're not getting some health risk. So let's kind of go through this briefly. And as I said, the one I'm really anxious to talk to you about is the avian flu. So that one will be more interesting. Uh, sources of environmental tobacco smoke exposure. 31% of indoor workers not are currently not covered by a smoke-free workplace policy. And that tends to be more the restaurant industry, also uh, locally casinos, the bingo industry. Most of the large <coughs> companies have actually gotten rid of uh, cigarette smoke. I remember uh, initially starting to work at Windsor Regional Hospital, Metropolitan Hospital back then. They actually used to sell cigarettes uh, in the gift shop. And there was a major controversy when they took the cigarettes out of the gift shop because at that time the gift shop was run by the uh, um, CNIB and so they were actually getting a lot of money uh, from s the sale of tobacco. And then uh, the next major controversy was when patients couldn't smoke in the hospital and they were smoking out in the hallways and you could see all the ashtrays and, and butts along the, the stairway. And now they are smoking outside, but it's in fairly close proximity to the hospital doors, so when you're walking in, you're being exposed. And this new legislation, in essence, puts a uh, distance involved as to where you're allowed to smoke. So we've come a long way. At some point in time, I would love uh, for children to actually say when they're reading the night before Christmas, uh, you know, what exactly is... is uh, Santa smoking, you know, the, the ring's coming out of the pipe. So we're coming there. Uh, 50, 40, 78 percent of youths are exposed to uh, tobacco smoke, and that's predominantly in the home environment. And we still have a problem with it uh, being in the home. The interesting thing is that the tobacco smoke concentration in cars is 23 times that than one will have in the home. And so that's really high levels of uh, tobacco smoke. So if we look at, if you go to that smoky bar and you're in there for two hours, you've uh, smoked the equivalent of at least four cigarettes. <coughs> so your risk is there. So how about that worker who is working there for eight hours, 10 hours a day for four to five uh, days a week, they're really being exposed to a lot of cigarette smokes. If you're in the non-smoking section, it's the equivalent of uh, one and a half cigarettes. So, I mean, you, you can't get rid of all the tobacco smoke that is there. Uh, and if you are living with somebody who smokes a package of cigarettes a day, you are smoking the equivalent of cigarette, three cigarettes a day. So a child who uh, is growing up in a home is being exposed to tobacco smoke. The concern is that when we look at the cigarette, we now know, and when I originally gave this talk, uh, 20 years ago, we used to say there was 3,500 chemicals in tobacco smoke. We now know it's close to 5,000 chemicals, and at least 60 of those are cancer-producing agents. What happens is because of the way the cigarettes are, they are burning at very excessive temperatures, and so a lot of different chemicals are coming off of that cigarette. A number of things have happened over the years with the development of cigarettes. Uh, one is the filter. They also start to put holes there to uh, increase the air that goes into the cigarette. And in order to get higher levels of nicotine exposure, uh, smokers actually plug those holes to, to get the levels in higher. 
There's two phases of environmental tobacco smoke. One is the vapor phase, they're all the gases that you breathe in. And anybody would be absolutely crazy to try to breathe in formaldehyde, ammonia, benzene. But we do it when we're smoking. The other is the particulate phase. And these particulates are the tars, and some of them are very uh, carcinogenic, especially in the nitrosamines. And the interesting thing is that when you smoke, uh, that's called mean stream smoking, but the side stream is the chemicals that are coming off that people in the environment uh, will breathe in. And the nitrosamines are two to eight times greater in the side, st side stream smoke versus the person who's smoking. And believe it or not, there's even radioactive uh, compounds in that smoke. <coughs> It's associated with a lot of morbidity, and if we look at children uh, in the home environment, there's uh, more lower respiratory tract infections. Uh, children as smokers tend to get more frequent infections. They tend to last a little bit longer. They tend to get more ear infections, higher rates of asthma. And uh, of course, there's always the uh, traumatic injuries related to the fires. It can affect uh, coronary artery disease by 30%. Um, and uh, actually, this is really interesting that if you look at uh, uh, blood of uh, people who work in smoky areas, they actually have increased inflammatory markers. So we know inflammation is going on very early. And if you look at young workers who are exposed to environmental tobacco smoke, their levels of some of the cholesterols are actually elevated. So it does affect heart disease. With looking at cancer, uh, there was two major studies that uh, targeted the concern of environmental tobacco smoke and lung cancers. And these date back from 1981. One was a Greek study and one was a Japanese study, and they came out at the same, about the same time. And they looked at spouses who were non-smoking, who were married to spouses who did smoke, and there was an increased rate of lung cancer. So that was the first time we kind of thought, okay, it made sense, but this actually documented the increase. Then uh, in 1986, it was felt that maybe the risk was as high as 30% association. In 1986, the Surgeon General in the States actually came out and said, yes, there was a definite risk. In 1992, Environmental Protective Agency actually came out and said it was a Group A known human carcinogen. In 1997, uh, there was another study, and it was felt it was about an in a 20 percent increased risk if you were married to a smoker. The most interesting case is that Heather Crow, and I'm sure everybody has uh, seen the advertisements if you go to the movie theaters, and actually now, more recently in the last several weeks, there's been more, is that she worked in a a bar, restaurant area where there was secondhand smoke. She was a non-smoker. She developed lung cancer. It is metastasized to the brain. She is in the palliative unit in Ottawa, dying from it. And hers was really the first case that has been accepted. And she, in essence, is the tip of the iceberg of the other workers out there who have been exposed. So hers is really a pivotal case that has been accepted. We now know that there's no threshold for the amount of tobacco related to cancer production. There's no safe level. <coughs> uh, we've talked a little bit about some of the deaths uh, related to heart disease, uh, stroke, is really associated with it. And for every eight smokers who die, one person is, dies from the environmental tobacco smoke. And so that's really a, a high rate of mortality. 
And the concern is that smoking is the most common in the least well-educated and the poor. The other is environmental tobacco smoke are also tend to be in the workers who are really at the minimum wages. Restaurant workers, bar workers uh, do not get a lot of protection. And the other is uh, just to remember that it is a significant factor for sudden infant death syndrome is uh, smoking parents and the risk for the newborns. This was a statement that came out of the British uh, Medical Journal in 2004. All patients at increased risk of coronary heart disease or with known coronary artery disease should be advised to avoid all indoor environments that permit smoking. And they really came out very hard on this because of the associated significance of heart disease related to additional environmental tobacco smoke. And also, this is one of the cigarette packets. You're not the only one smoking the cigarette. The ethical considerations that now face us, we do know there is a health risk. It's proven. I don't know how many bodies need to be stacked up for uh, government to take it seriously. And really, at what cost do we protect workers' health over potential economic loss? My sense, and I'm always an optimist, there are more non-smokers out there than smokers. And I plead with everybody to go as of January 1st and go and visit the casino, go and visit the bingo halls, go visit the restaurants, go visit the bars. My sense is a lot of people didn't want to go because of the smoking. So we have to put our feet to the pavement and go and support these industries. I think that they're estimating too high the number of jobs that are going to be lost. Some of the jobs that will be lost are related to the industry itself. It has nothing to do whether or not it's smoking related or not.